Let's get it. Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour talking professional wrestling and mixed martial arts. Actually, no mixed martial arts. That's just still stuck in my mind from years and years of saying that. But professional wrestling is what we talk about every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. And whether you're listening on TuneIn, iHeart, American Forces Radio, SportsByline.com, over-the-air affiliates like the Mightier 1090 on podcast via replay on SiriusXM, or maybe your video stream on Twitch or on YouTube. However you're joining me, I'd just like to say thank you for spending a little bit of time and hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny in your mind. It's Friday here on this program, Friday the 13th, and you know what that means. Brian's not here. I didn't know that that's what that was going to mean until literally at 3 p.m. Eastern time when I opened up my phone to see that he had sent me a text about 10 minutes earlier saying, Hey, why don't you do the first part of the show? I'll be coming in here shortly. So I expect Brian Alvarez will be joining me here today, unless he is a lot like me and has had enough of all of the sales talk and Vince McMahon talk and Palace Intrigue talk. I spent most of my morning just with my collection of of adding to my collection of digitized wrestling media, because one thing that this sale reminded me is WWE has a massive control over a lot of wrestling's history, and I like wrestling history. So I'm making sure that all of the things that I have from over the years, I am going to have no matter what. So that's how I spent most of my morning, trying to stay away from the news, but we're going to have to get into some news because all of that stuff I mentioned Vince, the sales talk, palace intrigue, uh, battles between the McMahons, Nick Khan sitting in the middle as a referee between Vince and Paul and Vince and Stephanie, all that sort of stuff. We're going to get into all that when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper VV here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. You know we do this show for an hour at a time, but if you want us 24-7, you can try to find us on Twitter. I am at Semper VV. Actually, really, literally, you can try to find us on Twitter with the way that that app is set up now. What a huge, massive pain in the ass that is. I know Brian went on a rant about this before, but oh my God, with the for you and the following and all that nonsense, nonsense. But we're still going to end up using that app because they haven't come up with a better alternative for it yet. So at Semper Vivi, the timeline for this show is at WONF4W. The broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Brian Alvarez is at Brian Alvarez. And if you love pro wrestling, at Mid Atlantic Pod and Patreon.com slash Mid Atlantic Podcast, where we'll maybe talk about one day the best. Best of seven series of all time, Magnum TA and Nikita Koloff. But that's not a conversation we're going to have right now, no. We've got to talk about WWE. It's the new Connor. we got to talk about Vince. we got to talk about Steph. we got to talk about Nick Khan. we got to talk about Paul. All this stuff happening. News broke yesterday from Barron's originally, and then CNBC ended up confirming the story that the Khan family, that would be... That would be Shad Khan, owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars and Fulham FC. He and his son, Tony Khan, you may know him from being the owner of AEW and Ring of Honor. They may want to get into the ring and throw their hat in for WWE. Now, I am greatly entertained by the thought of that. I really am, actually. Tony Khan's a big wrestling fan. He's got a a dedication to wrestling. For as much as I, you know, we're very different in some philosophies on things, I know he's a big wrestling fan. I know he was a big fan of history. I know he was a big fan of Mid-South. You know, one of those folks, you know, from the old DVD-R forum. So I would rather him have that library of stuff as opposed to almost any other media entity in the world, let alone Saudi Arabia. But I don't think that's going to happen. And I think this is a, and Hey, it could, 
It's not like you can't get investors in and come up with with some money. It's like The Rock. You know, if anybody thinks The Rock may have a shot at this thing, of course, you get together a bunch of your investing friends and a bunch of your rich friends, and you try to get them to buy in. Essentially, that's what Endeavor did with the UFC. Hey, Hollywood, does anybody want to crack at this thing? Come join us. You get free tickets to the fight, and it'll be great, and you just have to hype it up on your social media, and almost none of them ever do, but, you know, (laughs) there's Endeavor. Even if Vince buys this thing, you know, or tries to buy it back, in all likelihood, you're probably going to see a, I don't know, Donald Trump, I, you know, the, the any real life versions of the Carter Pewter Schmitz of Family Guy of the world. Those are going to be the people that he brings in to help invest in this thing. Whoever Barrios and Wilson and their company that they have go out and try to get people to invest in this thing. I don't know. But I do think, honestly, (laughs) that it makes sense that they would float their names out there, they meaning the Khan family. Because now every time, how many times have you guys now, everybody here is NBC Universal and Comcast Xfinity on a daily basis on this show since, you know, they're USA and all that sort of stuff. We talk about them constantly. How many times, though, now in the past couple of days have you heard about the Saudi investment fund? How many times now recently have you heard about things like Liberty Media that, okay, you know F1 Racing, you know what that is, you know what Live Nation is, you know what Sirius XM is, but who actually has holdings in all of those things? Oh, them. That now you're hearing them nonstop. And I think from a business point of view, one, you can't, it it wouldn't be a lie. I bet Tony Khan does have an interest in buying WWE. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But like, even more than that, the fact that the name is going to be said over and over, the name meaning AEW, All Elite Wrestling is interested in buying it. WWE's competitors are also in looking in the market to possibly purchase WWE. Maybe we even get some sound bites from Tony Khan and from people that want to talk about AEW and, and, and what would it mean if they were to buy WWE. So I think everybody is playing different things in this. You know what I'm saying? Everybody... Somebody is getting told something, a lie in their office right now in in WWE. Somebody's getting told a or a falsehood or being led astray a little bit because they can't. Somebody can't let them know the details of what's really going on. You know, and Tony Khan, hey, he would have an interest in buying it. Would they? Will they? I doubt it. Seriously, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of investment to put in. That is when Shad Khan has the two entities in the National Football League and in the Premier League. And now it's like, hey, hey, son, (laughs) you know, uh, you already got the AEW thing. You're already buying Ring of Honor. I mean, technically, I guess that was Tony's money that bought Ring of Honor. But, like, does his father want to invest in this at this point in his life? You know, or maybe he does. Maybe he does. Maybe he sees a few. Uh, yeah, it apparently dropped uh, between Sports Byline and 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 and, and uh, Brian's line, but uh, I'm back now at least, and uh, so we're we're back. I, I can't remember exactly where I was there, so I'm going to pick up with the Palace Intrigue portion of things, and that was Nick Khan being a buffer uh, between the McMahon family members. This is a story that is up on WrestlingObserver.com right now. It was posted up by Josh Nason about two hours ago, and it goes like this. Through the McMahon family corporate tumult, 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 tumultuous tumult that has dominated headlines, WWE CEO Nick Khan has been the buffer between the various parties trying to smooth things over. Dave Meltzer reported as such in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter. In reviewing the circumstances in which Stephanie McMahon suddenly resigned as co-CEO and left the company completely this week, Meltzer wrote, quote, It was also conceded that she and Vince did have issues in working together as family members and how Khan was a buffer who kept things smooth between them as well as between Vince and Levesque, end quote. In a whirlwind of moves, obviously, Vince McMahon returned to the company after his big July resignation for everything that he was accused of at the time. Stephanie McMahon had taken a leave of absence, and I did post up on my Twitter the story from June of 2022 from, I believe it was Claire Atkinson, a business insider, that 
seemed to indicate that Stephanie was was pushed out, and that actually falls at a time where they were replacing several people during that time uh, that were out of their, you know, that was, again, office people. That has nothing to do with some of the bloodletting that had taken place uh, on the talent side of things, so... There you go with Steph and Paul. And we're going to hear more about this as we push up against break here. We're going to hear more about this moving forward. Obviously, Nick Khan's role and how integral he is. I mean, Vince in the first place got rid of Barrios and Wilson because they had a beef over the direction of the company and that network and its value being farmed out to other places, including obviously NBC Universal, which picked it up and put it on Peacock. Now things seem to be changing. Things in the whole platform business seem to be changing. And Barrios and Wilson, you know, them being on board again may actually be a, a good thing, but we'll have to see. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. What's up, bros? I'm What's back. <laughs> I'm back. I know what it was. I know what it was in this first segment. Now that you had a little taste of that honey, you haven't been able to stop. You had a little bit of an overload. You were out there like, uh, not Paddington, I think he liked marmalade. But that other bear, Pooh Bear, he liked the honey and probably ate too much of it, passed out. That's what happened to you, isn't it, Brian Alvarez? Well, I did have a little bit of honey. But all I've had today is honey and one Tylenol. My voice is back at 90%. I have noticed a big issue is I can no longer hit the high notes. Ah. Which is an improvement. Well, Perhaps it it'll is. stay this way for the rest of my life. I wouldn't complain. Woo! Oh. But I yes, mean, no. I am I am back here and I have a I have a very important announcement to kick off this show with. Oh yeah? Yes. It is true. Myself, Dave Meltzer, and Dwayne would like to buy WWE. We're interested. You would like to. You're interested. No. We don't have nearly enough money. You, you, I was going to say, you've been digging in the cushions in that time, or have, have you been... I'm just saying. Talking to any Middle I want Eastern it reported uh, from men? here on out that Brian Alvarez, Dave Meltzer, and Dwayne are also interested in buying World Wrestling Entertainment. Got it? Got it. All right. Who'd run it? Not me. Probably Gwertz. I'd review it and talk about how awesome it is. That's what I'd do. All right. What did you talk about today? I've been gone. Well, I talked a little bit about the fact that Barons has reported on the cons, throwing their hat possibly yeah. in the ring and showing huh. interest. In, You're telling me they're in, interested too? Can I can't you, can, believe it. I know it. I know it. And I, I did mention that Nick. Are Khan you sure? Been, Hold on a second. Yes. Hold on a yes, second. Yes. Are you sure that mm -hmm. Chad and Tony Khan might have interest in buying WWE? Are you sure about that? You know, the thing is, Brian, even if you don't think that they have a real interest in buying it, you can't, there's no one who could say that Tony Khan would not be interested. Him himself, he would have interest, much like you, Dwayne, and Dave, in possibly reaching out to buy WWE. So, mm. yeah, they, they may very well have interest. Interesting. Well, what else did you talk about? I talked about the fact that Nick Khan... Uh, is the buffer among McMahon family members, which I don't think is any breaking news really to anybody that's been following Nick Khan and his relationship with the McMahon family over the past, what, five years now or so. So that was about it. At one point, the audio cut out. Hopefully uh, our connection was fine. It seemed to be just on byline's end, but we'll, we'll see. Other than that, that's pretty much been about it. Well, you know, a guy like Nick Khan, that's a good role for him because I don't know if you know this about Vince, but he can be hard to work with. No. Yeah. Wow. He can be hard to work with. <laughs> He's like a, a right, I'm 80%. when you're on the radio. But it's the point is, with. the point is, yeah, I can imagine being his, uh, his daughter or his son-in-law and, uh, and he treats you like everybody else. I can understand that being difficult. Yeah. Stephanie you know McMahon she... is in the hospital, apparently ankle surgery. Oh, Oh. I don't know what happened, but uh, she's in the hospital and uh, had her foot in the big gimmick there. So could be something recent, could be something she's had for a long time that she's finally getting taken care of. But Good. best Shot wishes to Lanes. her. I hope she heals faster than I did from this thing. Now, do you think Vince is going to send out some sort of social media thing, hoping his daughter gets better? Well, I don't think he has yet. Mm. He's busy. 
You know, do you think he would refer to Stephanie as his daughter if he were to send out a social media tweet about that situation? Of course he would. Of course he would. He'd call her his little girl. Really? Well, what maybe I guess he would. Uh, Stephanie, yes. when's the last time Stephanie has uh, released anything about her father? You know, because she leaves the company and, man, it's always about the chairman. It's always about Vince. And I can understand that from a business point of view. But, man, that seems to be a very cold family sometimes trying to deal with Vince. Hey, listen, when he when he stepped down, she went on SmackDown. She did call him her father and she cried. So that's what happened. Just mm-hmm. so you all know. Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, opposed a potential sale, it says here on the front page. They did not want to sell. Probably. It's so funny. Nothing. Nothing. One, I'm thinking about Andre, Stephanie stories, but that's that's a, a separate thing here. But uh, no, no, continue on. Go ahead. Well, Go ahead. here's the thing, everybody. I don't want to talk about stuff I don't know, but let's look at facts. OK, let's look at facts. I mean, maybe the guy's got a lot of hobbies, but what's Triple H going to do if he's not in the wrestling business? He's wanted to do this since he was a teenager. He's wanted to do this forever, and he has done it forever. Okay? Now, for those of you that have short memories, yes, Triple H is still doing what he was doing before Vince came back as of today. Okay? But, but, Vince ousted him. He was the guy that was in charge of NXT. He was the guy in charge of beating Dynamite on Wednesdays. He failed in that task. He was removed from his position. And NXT 2.0 rose from the ashes. Or whatever the opposite of that is. It it, it was burned up in a fire is what actually happened. (laughs) Sunk into the earth. Yes. So this guy has been removed once by Vince. Okay. Now, Dave has one timeline about the Stephanie thing. He may very well be right, but what I remember is Stephanie also stepped down. Now, he claims she stepped down. It was all on her. She had planned to do it months in advance. May very well be true, okay? But once she stepped down, you know, the rumor was that he'd gotten rid of her, and they leaked to the media that she sucked at her job. Pretty much. Okay? Pretty much. And by the way, again, as I mentioned during the first part of that segment, Stephanie was not the only one at the time being removed or switching positions at that time. It's just that she was the one who stepped down and she's the one who's named McMahon that ultimately other things again. She wasn't the only one toasted in that business insider article, but obviously because of who she is, it stands out. Well, then she came back. Then her father came back. And she immediately was gone again. And now this time, again, the story is that her dad got rid of her. So, you know, I'm trying to put pieces together here. It sounds to me like Triple H and Steph feel that if they sell the company, they're, they're toast. They're done. You think? Whereas if they don't sell the company, they'll run the company. And uh, Vince probably won't be there. And, of course, the story about Nick Khan having to be an intermediary. Sounds like they don't have the easiest time working together. That's what it sounds like to me. Hmm. So, I don't know what's going to happen here. Actually, I do know what's going to happen. It's going to be sold, and Vince is going to stick around. Although, uh, I, I do want to make this clear, because uh, people have been talking about this. It does not matter. It does not matter what guarantee Vince McMahon gets from whoever buys WWE. He can always be removed from his position. This has happened a million times in the history of every business ever. Okay. In fact, it's still a big story now why Dana White has not been punished for slapping his wife. Fighters now calling for him to be gone. Maybe not in those exact words because they want to get booked, but you know what I'm saying. So, uh, you know, he was guaranteed a position or whatever, and uh, and he could at any moment be ousted, okay? Ted Turner was ousted from his own company that he created. I mean, I can go on and on, people that, you know, there was a merger, there was a sale, so-and-so was guaranteed a job, hit the fan, they're out of there, okay? So there's no there's no 100%. Now, obviously, you know, if he if they sell to the Saudis, there's a pretty 
damn good chance he ain't going to be ousted for much. But you never know. But Disney, NBC Universal, Amazon, don't think this is for life. Nothing's for life. Except the NWO. Right? Not the not the BWO? They're definitely not for life. Wednesday's episode of Dynamite. 967,000 viewers. Up 12%. 0.33, which is up 27%. It was a uh, good number. But, oh, it was in a million. <laughs> You idiots are determined to kill me. <laughs> hey, listen. If you don't think 967 is a good number, I don't care. Like, you probably have rough issues in your own personal life because <laughs> if you set expectations at a certain level, and unless things reach that level, everything sucks, well, I don't know what you're going to do with your life. Oh, man, are you calling out the incels on this one? Are, are you talking about ratings incels? I didn't call anyone an incel. But this is a life lesson, everybody. If you set your expectations high, you have a you will have a life filled with disappointment. What do you think my expectations are when I hit the music for this show? Low. Yeah. So that every day I overachieve. Yeah, exactly. I don't That's sit here is... going, man, I'm going to get my Marconi today. Because <laughs> you know what? I'd be miserable all the do time. Even, do you even give those out anymore? So if your life is built around whether or not this show hit a million viewers, well, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, my life's yes, not built around life. whether Raw hits 2 million. You know what you're going to tell them. Or tell SmackDown them hits 3 million. Who cares? Tell them to get a life. Show is, uh, it's doing fine. It's doing fine. What else do we have? Oh, yeah, CM Punk. What's up with this bloke? I guess we should probably talk about that after the break. What a, what, his he's issue in full with, uh... troll mode now. Well, I mean, I think he's trolling a troll who was trolling him, right? So it's a it's a nasty 360. It is a a circle of trollism taking place between CM Punk and MJF. Hmm. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Current AW World Champion MJF posted a picture on Instagram Thursday, showing off two Pro Wrestling Illustrated 2022 award plaques. He won for most hated and feud of the year. What a mark. However, he taped over Punk's name on the feud plaque and put his own name on there instead. An hour later, Punk offered up his own thoughts in the comments saying, maybe find some tape for the ratings so nobody sees those either. Oh! What a troll. See, here's you the call, thing, everybody. You calling him one of those hey, people, listen, uh, Brian? This is exactly what I was talking about. Oh, uh, see, here we if go. If you set your expectations for a million, then they failed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't see me sitting here going, you know, the United Center seats 23,000 for a basketball game, but that bloke only drew 17,000 for his return. You don't see me saying that, do you? No, of course not. Because I'd be foolish to set my expectations that high. So he did great. Sold the place out. 18,000 or whatever. It's expectations. Got to set them low. Then you overachieve. Right? What about, what about accusations? What are you talking about? Rick Ross. Well, you definitely don't want any accusations with that guy around. No. You might drop no. a... Especially uh, not with a live mic. Drop a MF bomb on television. <laughs> that would be bad. Or all on this transition. show. It would also be bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. This week is almost over. We only have like, you know, what, 19 more minutes. You're almost out of here. You're almost safe. You have put in yeoman's effort this week. And more than your yeoman's effort. Incredible effort this week, struggling, fighting to come back on the air, not because you're doing it for the people, but more of for your own ego and not liking the fact I'm mostly that I was doing, doing it for this the people. show just fine without I had me. to listen to you for days on uh, end. Wanted is that what him, it is? Want to give him something. Oh, yeah. You put us some clips of me on hey. YouTube. What do you get? All Dave and Garrett now? What's going on Speaking here? Speaking of Dave, well, apparently in The Observer... SmackDown losing big money for Fox. Morgan Stanley did analysis for SmackDown. Felt they could not justify the price tag for the show. In the 2021 season, Fox paid $196 million on the show. Ended up with $134 million in losses. 2021-2022, Fox paid $208 million. Ended up with $145 million in losses. They estimate the losses will only get worse. 
with a projection of 155.6 million in losses for the 2023 season and 166.9 million for the 2023-2024 season. Fox's deal is 221 million for the payment to WWE for SmackDown and 234 million in 2023-2024. Why is nobody talking about this as huge news it says? It is, man, but I think because you know, people are setting their standards too high. Well, I think most wrestling They're expecting fans expecting this wrestling thing to make money. They don't realize it. I think a lot of wrestling fans may not realize it because you're hearing it in other realms. You know, Google, YouTube just picked up the NFL package. And when you look at what they're going to charge for it compared to what they paid for it, how do you make that money back? It's almost impossible to make that money back. That's one of the reasons that Apple, if they had picked up the NFL Sunday package, they wanted to lower the price so they had a lower entry for people to get into it. But Google's and the NFL, I guess, didn't want that. YouTube didn't want that. They decided to go in that direction, and there it is. But when you look at these numbers that are staggering, that just keep going up and up and up, like... Where do you get all of your return back from that if you're one of these companies? And WWE as a company, do you really, and I'm not, look, I'm not a financier. I'm not an accountant. I don't know. But as a layman, is WWE worth $6 billion, the numbers that are being thrown around? I guess if you find somebody to pay that money, then it is worth it. But in my eyes, that's an insane amount of money if you really think about it. For WWE, it, it just is. But then again, there's a lot of these things that have spiraled up and out of control that are going to be chopped away slowly but surely or going to be chopped back down again. So there is a level of sanity to some of this stuff as other things continue to blow up. Baseball contracts, all that sort of stuff. Well, you know, Let's talk about the NFL, my forte, football. Yes. 2021, the NFL signed a number of media rights deals with uh, Fox, CBS, NBC, ESPN, Amazon. You know how much these deals were worth? A lot. $110 billion. Let me say that again. One hundred and ten billion dollars. There's not even that many stars in the Milky Way. Billion. One hundred ten billion dollars. Do you think that CBS, NBC, Fox, ESPN, and Amazon are like making massive profits, spending one hundred and ten billion dollars on the NFL? I'll tell you right now, they're not. Okay. Especially when you hey throw all of the other sports properties that they have as well with it too, and see if they make any money off of any of that. That's the point. There's a lot of stuff that goes into these deals. These deals are not merely about well, we're going to pay you, you know, five billion. We expect to make seven billion, so we come out two billion ahead. Don't work like that. Sometimes it does, but usually it doesn't. Let's talk about uh, this WWE Peacock deal. I did the math once. And uh, I forget what, what it was, but it was ridiculous. It, it was essentially like, for what Peacock paid for the WWE Network, okay? I think it was something like, WWE could have just given, or Peacock. Peacock could have just given every single solitary person that subscribed to the WWE Network like $750 with the thing, like... If you subscribe for four years, we're going to give you each $750. That's how much they spent. They massively overspent for the WWE Network. Like, astronomical. It was like 1000 I think it was. Yeah. So, it's like, if, if Peacock would have just said, you know, Mike, sign up for five years to Peacock. We're going to give you $1,000. That's basically what they did here. For every single solitary person that was a subscriber to the WWE Network, that's how much they paid. Paid $1,000 per human being that was subscribed to that network. I didn't get that money. But anyway, the point is, dude, why did they do that? They didn't do that thinking, well, we're going to pay $1,000 per customer who's paying $9.99 a month, and we're going to have double the number of people. Actually, more than that. It would have to be, uh, let's see, $1,900. For every one person, we're going to need uh, 100, right? 
We're going to need 100 people, more, 200, because now they're paying $4.99. So for every person we sign up for the network, we are expecting minimum 100 people for each person to pay $4.99, or whatever my math was. It's not going to happen is the point. <laughs> the point was they wanted those people invested in Peacock and watching other things on Peacock. Mm -hmm. and and uh, maybe canceling Netflix for Peacock or whatever. Hey, you know, you want to watch WWE? Well, you got to get Peacock. You got to tell your friends about Peacock. That's why it was done. Not because they actually think they're going to get whatever the preposterous number was. Uh, I don't even know. Like, you know, 50 million wrestling fans are going to sign it for Peacock. There's no way they thought that. There were other reasons they made that deal. Same thing with SmackDown. Just because they're losing all this money doesn't mean they're not going to offer more next time. Everybody has their reasons for what they do. Forget what the IBITDA means, but uh, $506 million of revenue for NBCU's media unit. This comes from The Hollywood Reporter talking about their third quarter in 2022. This came out on October 27th. The total number of losses at that point in the game $614 million related to Peacock. So that compared with $230 million of revenue revenue, and an adjusted EBITDA loss of $520 million related to the streamer, meaning Peacock, in the prior year period. Yeah. Crazy part about that was, too, if you had Xfinity <laughs> slash Comcast cable already, you were getting it for free. The only thing that you needed to do was to then spend four ninety nine if you wanted it commercial free. So they were, you know, how they go about trying to come up with numbers that have justified why some of these streaming companies have done what they've done, you know, because we get it over this way when it comes to hours watched and we're able to do this. And, and it's like, I don't know if anybody knows what they're doing, except a lot of money has been spent in a lot of ways. Look at all the ones that have failed. Look at all the ones people barely use. I mean, Tubi is owned by Fox. How many how many times do you really hear that talked about, especially in relation with a Pluto TV or actually any of the other paid streaming services that are out there? Presents, what are the chances of Raw being phoned in on Monday? Martin Luther King's holiday combination with the biggest Monday night game of the year. Sure to make Raw one of the least watched shows. I don't expect them to shoot big angles on Monday. I don't think the show's going to be bad. I think what you'll see is like a lot of long wrestling matches. And and the Vince video package is very important where we're Vince, the, the one African-American that he can look at with any acclaim that we make sure that we have that Martin Luther King video package every single year to show that Vince is, you know, Vince is that, that good guy. Let's see what we got here. What are the pros and cons of WWE going private? For who? For us? There's, there's too long of a list to actually go through legitimately. Well, you know, there's really a lot is. of there's a lot of cons. The main one is just Vince having unlimited power to do whatever he wants. Uh, see, there's your chance to say Nick. Nick Con. Make a Nick Con joke right there, but apparently not. But yes, it really comes Nikon down does. to if you're Vince, you don't have to look. When did he ever, he hated Linda running for politics, hated it, hated those people. He wants to be in the mix with all of these other rich people, but he detests them in a lot of ways. You know, this is about a fight to him. This is about, you know, clawing and wanting to stick it in a lot of those people's faces by saying that he has it. I mean, that's what drives this dude. That's what that guy is. You realize that if this had been a private company and Vince did everything that he did with all of those different women... Literally nothing would have happened. No, we would because never because it was a have private company. We would have never possibly known unless, obviously, look, it came from a friend of that paralegal. So yeah, in theory, even at a private company, this could have happened, and their board of directors would have looked into it, and there could have been things. But the whole point is, we would never know that. That information would have never gotten out there. And through this, we know, we know. 
forget about anecdotal evidence or stories or rumors or any of that stuff. The board itself has said there are other damaging things out there, which makes it one of the reasons that we would like you to not come back at this particular time. And Vince, who has already stated on the record from the Wall Street Journal that he felt as though from sources close to him that he could have written this whole thing out. I mean, obviously, you know where his mind's at when it comes to this sort of stuff and how he feels about it. Nobody makes money from streaming, this person says. Only Netflix Netflix has ever gone in the black, and that was just for a very short period of time. Well, we're investing in a new technology, you see, everybody. Investing in a new technology. Now, when you, Dwayne... Actually, in... we made money from streaming the show. That's true. But... Uh... Does it ever story. trickle down? Is it ever going to trickle down? I think it's race time, boss. I think it's race time. <laughs> uh, see, now he's all now he's sick again. God, you're trying to kill me or what? <laughs> Am I going to have to go? Who's our intermediary? Who's the, who's going to be Nick Khan between us? Get it, get talking to him. <laughs> Actually, it's Dwayne. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I'll talk to Dwayne. Give, give me Dwayne, boy. Good I got luck. something to say. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi. Let's get, you know what? Hold on. We need to congratulate you. No, everybody should stand up and actually be congratulating you right now for getting through this week. I am proud of you, boss man. The struggles you have gone through. You made it, buddy. Thanks, dude. We actually have people here trying to figure out when this website became profitable. And someone when goes, did it start? probably around the time of AEW. What? Oh, and actually, and actually, what I uh, what I wrote in the chat was wrong. I wrote 2005, which is true for the website because that's the year it started. But it actually was profitable in 1995. Now, was it hugely profitable from about 1995 to 2005? No, but it was profitable because you know what? It's not a publicly traded company. This is like an you know what we're like we're like a territory. If we don't make money. We go out of business. Mm. You guys know what a business is? They don't, Brian. They don't. Golly gee. They never run Willikers. One. No, I know. You it. young kids today. You know what? Shout out to everybody who remembers back in the day, the little pictures up at the top of that screen. Dave Meltzer, Brian Alvarez, and Alex Marvez. Marvez and, and Alvarez together. Marvez had a hell of a tan then, too. Boy, he was a young guy back in this that. This guy picture. goes, twelve ninety nine is more than any streaming service other mm. than HBO. What? Well, yes, it is. So if you want to listen to the show, our show, you pay twelve ninety nine. If you want to go pay nine ninety nine for Netflix, that's fine, but you won't get the show. Netflix ain't paying me, buddy. Wouldn't you want the price to go down? I'm trying to get more out of this deal. In fact, I think Brian should charge everybody about ninety nine ninety nine. You know what costs more than this this website? What's that? Go into uh, Jump Planet. Jump planet? Yeah, you jump on trampolines. Oh yeah, like it's like twenty six ninety nine to get in. Now, do you do that? Why would you make that comparison? I don't know. You can't jump on a trampoline here. You can't listen to my show and jump planet. Can I jump on a trampoline while we're doing a show? I know it wasn't a complaint, Doctor Jack Hammer. Which, by the way, I was no one used that name in wrestling before. Doctor Jack Hammer. See you later, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live.